Hello everyone, this is Daniel Zippin, here discussing the first movement of Beethoven's Symphony No. 1, with a particular emphasis on formal analysis of the work. This movement, in keeping with classic era and more broadly symphonic tradition for the first movements of symphonies, is written in sonata form. Sonata form, at its core, is comprised of an exposition which introduces the major themes that will be found throughout the movement, a development section which creatively alters and transforms those themes with advanced compositional and harmonic techniques, a recapitulation which represents a return to stability and plays the themes from the exposition in their entirety once again, and then a coda or codetta which brings the movement to a close. It is interesting to note that sonata form was not called by that name to the composers of the late 18th and early 19th centuries. The composers of the time were simply following conventions popular during that period to help them more easily compose pieces with a good balance of repetition and contrast and stability and instability in a timely manner. It wasn't until well into the 19th century that musicians and scholars began identifying patterns common to the style of music and categorizing them into a specific song form, today known as sonata form. The exposition in sonata form includes a first theme which establishes the tonic or home key of the movement, in the case of Beethoven's Symphony I, that is C major, transitional material that takes the harmony away from the tonic key, a second theme, typically written in the dominant for major key movements and the parallel major for minor key movements, and closing material to bring the section to a close and prepare for the development section. In an exposition, at the end of the transitional material between the first and second themes, there is a special chord called a medial sejora, which harmonically sets up the new key for the second theme and usually includes a moment of silence that creates anticipation for the second theme to come. In classical era sonata form, the exposition section is played twice in a row. The most important concept to the function of sonata form is that the exposition's second theme is not in the home key established during the first theme. This presents a compositional problem of sorts, which is prolonged by the development section and resolved in the recapitulation. Take a listen to the exposition of the first movement of Beethoven's Symphony No. 1, written in the key of C major. For ease of analysis, I have labeled all the major components of the exposition into the score as they occur, those components being the first theme, transition, medial sejora, second theme, and closing material, as well as some other interesting details within Beethoven's writing.
take notice that in the exposition of this piece, there are in some sense two first themes that are each based upon one another. And in the secondary theme, it works much the same way with two variations, basically, on the same theme. Notice in the second theme that you have this melody in the oboe, and then later oboe and bassoon, that's loosely based on this secondary theme that's introduced here. And as well, you have another variation on that second theme um, being played this time as a counter melody that underpins this variation on the second theme. Notice how much of the closing material in this exposition is derived from the first theme as well as the transitional material found earlier in the movement. And Beethoven outlines this fact and highlights it um, using Sforzandi. In addition, observe the extremes of dynamic contrast already being used here in the exposition with soft piano dynamic contrasted with loud fortes and punctuated with sforzandi traded throughout the orchestra, and then as well all of that contrasted with the rare, extremely loud fortissimos, signifying structural arrival points within the piece. And let's not forget the forte pianos as well, adding extremes of drama and contrast. This is all very typical of Beethoven's compositional style. The development section of sonata form takes the themes presented in the exposition and transforms them in unexpected ways. The creativity of the composer takes hold in the development section. In the development, previous material is altered by taking the first and or second themes through distantly related keys, breaking down and fragmenting themes into small sections, sequencing themes or fragments of themes, augmenting the themes, juxtaposing themes to create complex lines of counterpoint, and any other creative compositional techniques you can imagine. The ending portion of the development section includes what is called the retransition. A retransition sets up for the return to the tonic key in the recapitulation, typically through the use of a dominant pedal. Take a listen to the development section of this first movement of Beethoven Symphony No. 1. Notice how the themes from the exposition are altered, fragmented, passed around the orchestra, and played in many different keys that are distantly related to the original C major. Also, observe the retransition that closes out the development section, which in this case is a unison line played by the woodwinds that leads to the note G implying the dominant of C and therefore setting up a return to C major. Note how Beethoven chooses a soft dynamic, thin orchestration, and slow harmonic rhythm to draw the listener in and create anticipation for the next section of the movement. Capitulation in sonata form repeats the first theme, transition, second theme, and closing material from the exposition. However, in the recapitulation, 
Both the first and the second themes are played in the home key, and the transition stays in the tonic as well, rather than modulating to a new key. This solves the compositional problem posed by the second theme in the exposition, by reaffirming the tonic and ending out this first movement in C major. In the recapitulation of this particular movement, notice that Beethoven decides to begin the first theme at an extremely loud volume with full orchestration, in complete contrast to the way the first theme was presented in the exposition. You'll also notice that the transition between the first and second themes that Beethoven writes in the recapitulation is totally different than the transition he wrote in the exposition, even going so far as to add an 8-bar extension with sequencing traded throughout the strings. Take a listen to the recapitulation of the first movement to Beethoven's Symphony No. 1. Pieces in sonata form also include a coda to end the movement. Notice how Beethoven writes C major chords with full orchestration at a loud volume and huge rhythmic energy in his coda to reinforce the home key and bring the movement to a close. Pieces in sonata form often include a slow introduction that takes place before the beginning of the exposition. You will hear that the introduction in this first movement of Beethoven's Symphony No. 1 is somewhat unusual compared to introductions of other symphonies from the time, because it begins very quietly and without the use of trumpet or timpani. This introduction, rather than proclaiming the C major tonic, as you would expect, hides C major until the exposition, opting instead to open with a series of applied dominant chords. This creates a lot of ambiguity, suspense, and anticipation for the listener that is not satisfied until the exposition begins. Let's take a listen to the first movement of Beethoven Symphony No. 1 in its entirety, with introduction, exposition, development, recapitulation, and coda all together. Now that we've explored each of these formal components in depth, I encourage anyone listening now to keep that structure in the back of your mind as the driving force for contrast and repetition and stability and instability. But also turn your focus now to the driving rhythms, beautiful orchestrations, huge dynamic contrasts, clever use of counterpoint, 
and whatever else you find to be interesting and engaging as a listener. Focus on how the themes are traded throughout the orchestra and how seemingly unrelated passages of music are in fact related or even derived from one another. Listen for details hidden within the baseline and inner voices and really allow the piece to come alive in your mind as you listen. I find this movement to be dynamic, exciting, and expertly crafted in every way. And I sincerely hope you do as well.
like to conclude by saying that Beethoven's first symphony follows very closely to the conventions of symphonic music popular in Europe at that time, evidenced first and foremost by his fairly strict adherence to the conventions of sonata form in the first movement. The symphony includes many nods to the compositional style and techniques of Beethoven's teacher, Franz Josef Haydn, and I like to think of Beethoven as picking up the symphonic tradition with his first symphony, right where Haydn left off. I'm certain Beethoven was trying to establish himself as an artist who's capable of doing highly creative and dynamic work, even within the confines and traditions of the 18th century classical style. In the 30 years following the creation of this symphony, Beethoven would go on to expand these traditions and create new traditions in music composition that would eventually lead to the Romanticism that became popular after his death. I myself tend to enjoy and appreciate early Beethoven works like the First Symphony every bit as much as his more groundbreaking compositions that came later. And as a conductor, my interpretations of those later works are heavily influenced by the knowledge that Beethoven began his career firmly rooted in the musical traditions and cultural landscape of Mozart, Haydn, and other classical composers who were his predecessors and contemporaries. I sincerely hope you enjoyed listening to the first movement of Beethoven's Symphony No. 1, as well as hearing my analysis of the sonata form contained within it. Thank you so much for watching.